tape. So if it blows away, I shall stop. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome you to the official opening of Wolverley Allotment Site and all of you that have been invited, especially <laughs> welcome, as you've all made a valuable contribution to the success of our allotment project. It's just over six years now since I had an idea that I would like to grow my own fruit and vegetables. Um, discussing this with friends and neighbours, there were quickly another 10 people who were interested in having an allotment. And so a letter was sent to the parish council requesting the provision of land for this purpose. I uh, attended the next parish council meeting and gave a three minute presentation, which was timed and practiced to the second with the cooker timer before I turned up. And the parish council all unanimously agreed that it would be a great asset to the parish uh, to have an allotment site. So the long search for land began. Uh, it was three years later when I received a phone call from Peter Smith rather late in the evening after the parish council meeting and Peter asked how much land we would like and I replied an acre would be fine thank you and Peter said how about two and a half acres <laughs> and we actually now have nearer three um, so I was a little taken aback by this and uh, rather cautiously said uh, yes that would be wonderful <laughs> and then started to think of the implications of a three acre site. And I soon realized that it wasn't just going to be 14 of us having a little bit of land with our own little plots, because we, there were so many other implications. We would need a new entrance, we would need uh, tracks through the site, because obviously people would be coming from further afield. Um, we would need uh, fencing because of the long boundary. There were so many things that I hadn't really anticipated that we were going to need. And I very soon began to realize that this was probably going to be a rather expensive, expensive and rather time consuming project. Um, so I began to think what else we could do with this land to, to make it into more of a, a community facility. And I started to think in terms of an inclusive community allotment site with facilities for the less able, with facilities for children, um, with the, the raised beds for the, for the less able um, and then I thought perhaps a community orchard would be good and then we really got carried away with a, a wildflower meadow and beehives <laughs> but it started to take shape as a very very different project from what I had intended in the beginning. Um, I think John Hart we have to thank for acquiring the land for us. He took advantage of the Localism Act which enabled the District Council to lease the land to the Parish Council who could then lease the land to us for allotments. So we then started to look at how we were going to manage this bigger project. We took advice on becoming a charitable incorporated organisation. Thanks to Tonya, we eventually gained status, uh, registered charity status. And then we had to find trustees. And we were very lucky to find seven trustees within the community, uh, including Jane Hill, who couldn't make it today. And as a solicitor, she was invaluable in negotiating the lease. I also intend attended a workshop on applying for funding and with Janet's great support and computer skills, we have now to date raised £20,000. Um, we have also been overwhelmed by the generosity of companies and local people, and a further 5000 has been donated in materials or money, which has enabled us to make such good progress in our first year. The lease was signed on July the, the 2014, so only just over a year. And after completing the new entrance, the raised beds were the first project with all the materials donated. I phoned a, company in Car a t timber company in Carlisle to ask their advice on timber for raised beds. And they said, I said we were a charity and we were setting up an allotment. And they said, let me stop you there. Please send an email to our sales director. So 
Janet Julie sent an email to the sales director and we had a reply saying I can supply you with these sleepers if they're suitable just let me know how many you'd like and whether you'd like brown or green and we were amazed <laughs> there's a good few thousand pounds worth of wood there so as soon as the gate was done the sleepers were delivered and the next day 20 volunteers turned up and built them in a day. It was very interesting standing here on the site wondering if anyone was going to come and then seeing all these heads coming along the lane with a shovel on their shoulder <laughs> and everybody set to and did a wonderful job. Um, the, the first plots were measured out by uh, Rob Andrews in September but unfortunately the ground became very wet and several vehicles got stuck in the mud. I think there was a friendly farmer cutting a hedge somewhere that was quite busy towing vehicles off the site. So little progress was made until February when the hardcore tracks were completed. We're extremely grateful to James Binion for all his advice and support as well as completing the major work on the site as money became available. Um, we didn't always have all the funding to complete the project, so James was very good and did what he could with the money we got at the time. Hence, we've only got <coughs> half a fence as yet. So, as you can see, everyone's worked extremely hard on their plots. Uh, they're all set out to individual designs with wonderful crops ready for harvesting. And some people have only had their plot for a few months and have worked absolute wonders in that time. We still have some work to do. Most urgent is connection of mains water supply to dip tanks through the site. We have just received money to purchase a Thunderbox to go composting toilet, which is quite exciting. <laughs> We've only just had the money yet, so it's, it'll be a while before it appears. Um, we found one with uh, two toilets, one with disabled access and one with steps up. It's particularly important with the school children coming on site to have toilet facilities. Um, as I said, the boundary fence needs completing and um, we very much would like a community building where mem members can shelter from the rain and give us secure storage for donated materials. It would also be lovely if we could eventually have some picnic tables so that families can bring up picnic lunches when they're working and we can perhaps have shared meals on the site using up some of the produce. But, however, we, we already have, as I'm sure you'd agree, a successful established allotment site. Six years ago, I had an idea that I was letting, my, I had no idea what I was letting myself in for. I certainly didn't realise allotments would take over my life. <laughs> now, when I say to friends, I've had an idea, <laughs> that's the look I get. <laughs> I say, be very careful. Um, so, this, these facilities we have now are way beyond our wildest dreams when we first thought about allotments for Walgley. And the demand for plots and the dedication of plot holders proves the project has met a need and is a valuable asset to the community. So thank you all so much for taking part in this celebration with us and thank you all for the contribution which you and others unable to attend have made to the success of our project. I hope you'll spend a little time looking around the plots and participate in the other activities taking place, uh, including the wonderful cakes and barbecue that members have provided um, on the marquee and just the barbecue is just a little bit further up. Um, I, I think that the, this event shows the strength of the community <coughs> that has already developed on the allotment and I would like to thank all the members for their support and contribution. I now ask Morris Lander to cut the ribbon to declare Warbley allotment site officially open. Morris is the regional, although I think now it's deputy regional, he was going to retire but it hasn't quite happened, uh, representative of the National Allotment Society. He first visited the site several years ago and has given us valuable support and advice. He's even abandoned his wife on their 40th wedding anniversary oh. to be here with us to cut the ribbon. So thank you. Apologies to your wife. I'm sure we can provide a nice slice of cake you can yeah. take home. <laughs> thank you, Maurice. Thank so you. can you, I think we need to have um, one with the big shears for a photograph yeah. and then the sharp scissors to actually cut the ribbon. <laughs> so can we have one of the, uh, a photograph of 
Yeah. Yeah. It might work first time. I, I tried it, it didn't. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay. Jenny, can you go and stand by? Yeah. Jenny. Yeah. 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 yeah, three cheers for Jenny. Hip hip. Hooray. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs>